Greetings, brothers and sisters, in the name of Christ our King. Honored to have a moment of your time. I'm preaching a message tonight that's really stirred my heart, and the title of it is Wasted Days and Wasted Night. It comes out of Acts chapter 9. You're going to get a prelude of it before the church ever hears it. Wasted days and wasted nights. Waste belongs in a waste field, not in your life. Every day, tens of thousands of pounds of food are wasted in the, in, in the restaurant industry that children could eat. We waste water. I remember a while back in a drought, it, people were sighted on TV still watering their lawn in a drought trying to keep their image up when people in the neighborhood was without drinking water. Waste, wasted days and wasted nights. I'm not talking about rest days. We all need rest days. We all need to take a day off and rest. The Sabbath was created for us to rest. I'm talking about wasted days and wasted nights. Wasted on things that don't is not a part of God's plan for your life. How many days and nights have you wasted? How much time have you wasted trying to convince somebody to love you that didn't even like you? How, how much time have you wasted trying to convince somebody to be a part of your life when, when they don't even care about you at all? How many times have we, how many, how many days and nights have we wasted on things, being involved in things that was not a part of God's plan for our life. Look at the wasted days and nights that people are incarcerated and in rehabs. Uh, uh, rehabs are a great thing, but it's not designed for you to be in them. Wasted days, wasted nights. The Bible said in Acts chapter 9, beginning with verse 1, Saul still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord. He went to the high priest and desired a letter to go to Jerusalem to incarcerate men and women if he found any of the way Christians. And the Bible said on the road to Damascus a great light shined on him and he fell to the ground. But the great thing about Saul, when he got up he didn't waste any time. He heard the voice of Jesus. The Lord said, Saul, why are you kicking against the goads? And Jesus gave him some instructions. He never wasted another day. He never wasted another minute. He got busy doing what God called him to do. The Bible said Saul still breathing threats still breathing threats and murder. You're still hearing the threats. You're never going to be anything. You're never going back to college. Your children's never going to be free. Your marriage is never going to have any peace. The devil is a lie. He'll breathe threats. Satan can't do what he says he'd do. We'd already be dead in hell. He would have killed us when we were in sin. But the Bible says while we were yet in sin, God Christ loved us. Saul, still breathing threats. You need to close your ears to the threats of the enemy. Don't waste another day. Don't waste another Sunday, another church service. Get your, get your family and your house in in the house of God and let God do a new work in you. No more wasted days, no more wasted nights, no more wasted relationships, no more tying yourself to people that's not a part of God's plan for your life, no more listening to the negativity and the threat. Satan's trying to threat you. He's, he, he's, trying, he's trying to bluff you out of your destiny, still breathing threats. All of a sudden he got letters, he got access. Glory to God. Amen. Be careful of the access that you get by other people. Just because people okay a thing don't mean God okays a thing. Saul got access from the high priest to go to Jerusalem to incarcerate Christians. Just because government says a thing's okay don't mean God says a thing's okay. Just because marijuana is legalized by government don't mean God's okay with you getting high. Be careful of the letters and the access and the approval you get from other people. Saul got a letter to incarcerate Christians, but on the road to Damascus, I call it the Damascus Road Delivery. Glory to God. God put a roadblock in, in Saul's path. And the Bible said a light shined on him. Aren't you glad the light clicked? You know the old cartoons and the movies we see where the light goes off, the light bulb will go off on a cartoon and somebody, it's the minute that your spirit is quickened. I thank God for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost that quickens our spirit and the light comes off. It's the, it's, it's the, it's the second, it's, it's the moment that your spirit is quickened and awakened and all of a sudden the light came on and he hit the ground and Jesus began to speak to him. The Damascus Road deliverance, Damascus God. Take the mask off. I'm tired of hiding behind this camouflage. I'm tired of wasting days and wasted nights. I'm tired of living in places that's less than where I was created to live. I'm tired of all my effort, my energy going to the waste field. I'm tired of my money. I'm tired of having holes in my pockets. I'm tired of wasted days and wasted nights. Saul thought he was doing a good work, but he was out of God's will. But the Lord, the light shined on him. He fell to the ground. And God began to speak, and he never wasted another day, and he never wasted another night. He got busy about his father's business. You can do the same thing too. Hey, it's not a shame to have wasted days and wasted nights. We've all done it. I've been incarcerated, been in rehab, been in trouble. I've lived in waste fields. 
wasted days, wasted nights, wasted years. I did it, I've been there. But amen, you don't have to live there. Once the Word of God comes alive in your spirit, you have that awakening, that quickening moment of the Holy Ghost, then you are at the place to make a decision. The Bible said, choose this day whom you're gonna serve. Don't waste another Sunday, Sunday's coming. Get up, get your family ready, get your children ready. Bring them to the house of the Lord, 1601 East Park Avenue, and you'll never have another wasted day and wasted night. You'll have a purpose. You'll have, you'll have meaning. Your life will have an agenda to serve Christ. We'll be looking for you. We have a revival May the 16th through the 20th. We have some awesome speakers, some phenomenal speakers. We have an all-star cast, man. We have Tyler Carter, Prophet Marvin Booth, Apostle Keith Mackey coming from the Bahamas. Come be a part of it. Look it up on our Facebook page and see what God has in store for you. Come be a part of it in Jesus' name. Pastor Joy Castleberry, we'll be looking for you. Glad to have this moment of your time in Jesus' name.